I'm going to conclude with a quick reflection on observations regarding shoreline processes that I've made during three decades of working on the upper lakes. There seems to be opposition to Plan BV7 from, from some of the shoreline property owners on Lake Ontario, where the shoreline has been heavily armored. <clears throat> Wave physics suggests that armoring results in scouring of sand, sends sediment offshore, and creates deficit shadows downshore, areas that are, are they receive erosion but no replenishment of sand, and it, uh, armoring does not work in, in the long term. <clears throat> erosion is a natural process that attacks the shoreline during storms, but it happens at different elevations on an unregulated lake rather, rather than at the same elevation on a regulated lake. During the height of the 1986 high lake level on Lake Michigan that I referred to earlier, the beach was scoured away in front of the revetment here on the south shore of the lake, but the beach returned when lake levels were much lower two years later in 1988. <clears throat> Three years after the lake levels receded uh, greatly from the 1997 high, the that revetment that I showed you before could hardly be found. Not only had an extensive beach return, but the revetment was covered by a developing dune, a dune that remains there today. This replenishment of no cost, no cost, natural shoreline protection occurred across many areas of Lake Michigan and also Lake Huron, also be all because low of the low lake levels which are not allowed by any regulation plan for Lake Ontario except Plan BV7. Property owners who wish to have a beach again should consider the benefits that only BV7 can bring them. <clears throat> Under unregulated Plan E, uh, Lake Ontario would have lo lower and longer lasting low lake levels during the periods of low water supply. However, during the unregulated uh, because, however, the unregulated highs would impact infrastructure built on, on the shoreline. That being the case, they're not being allowed, and they probably shouldn't be. <clears throat> Plan 58DD reduces those highs by half a meter or 1.6 feet, but also takes away the lows that rebuild the beaches. Plan BV7 provides nearly the same reduction in high lake levels. It adds only 6 centimeters or 2.4 inches to the highest high that occurred under 58 DD. However, it also allows lows during periods of low supply that can rebuild beaches. It's the only plan considered that lets this happen. Not only is Plan BV7 beneficial for, for the environment, but it could be beneficial for shoreline property owners also. If you're interested in learning more uh, on many of the details regarding past and present water levels in the Great Lakes are given in this report that can be accessed at the URL that is shown. Thank you.